Let's learn a little bit about cell biology, and this is a good one to relate an analogy to as far as the city. So we have the animal cell right there in the center. It all begins in the nucleus, so number two is the nucleus, and nucleus is represented as town hall. This is where all the executive decisions come from. This, is, this dictates everything that happens in the cell. So it's kind of like the government within the cell. Number one there represents the nucleolus, and that's just where our ribosomes are made. And they'll sneak out through the nuclear pore and either attach to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, number five, or they may just kind of float around in the cytoplasm there, the liquid part of the cell with the organelles. So it all starts at the nucleus. That's where our DNA is. And within our DNA is our genes. The genes, when they um, are activated, they will then produce messenger RNA that will go out outside the nucleus through one of those nuclear pores and find a ribosome. And the ribosome itself, along with the rough endoplasmic reticulum, can be considered a factory because this is where our proteins are made. Uh, they work together. To make the proteins. And then our smooth endoplasmic reticulum, it's called smooth because it doesn't have ribosomes attached to them. And it's called a rehab center because a lot of our detoxification happens here. This in our liver cells, whenever we you know we drink alcohol or take drugs, whether it's recreational or uh, medical drugs, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum does a its role as far as um, detoxifying whatever comes through. So they, they labeled that the re rehab center. Another one that works pretty close with the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is the peroxisome. It's number 10 and it's represented by the police. And again, anything that's toxic, uh, especially like hydrogen peroxide, then uh, the peroxisome will make that a less toxic substance. It carries a lot of catalase enzyme that, that actually takes hydrogen peroxide and, and makes it water and oxygen. Let's see, the toll booth, number 14, is our plasma membrane. So the whole point of having a cell membrane is to separate the external environment from the internal environment. There's a certain environment that the internal cell wants to maintain so the cell membrane is selective it'll let certain things in and uh, block certain things from from coming in let's see the power plant the powerhouse of the cell you always hear that is number nine the mitochondria that's where all our energy is made to uh, kind of keep everything going so ATP is our energy currency in the cell and the mitochondria will take in glucose and convert it to ATP for us. The lysosomes are the recycling trucks represented by number 12. Lysosomes are chock full of all different types of enzymes that anytime there's something that needs to be disposed of in the cell, maybe you have some, um, worn organelle or something like that, then the lysosome will bind to it and break it down into its building blocks. And if it can recycle anything, it will. You know, if it's a protein that needs to be broken down, it'll recycle it into its individual amino acids and then recycle what amino acids it can. Vesicles are represented by vehicles, number four. So anytime you know, like if you have a protein being made in the rough endoplasmic reticulum and it has to move out towards the outside of the cell, it'll do so in a vesicle, which is the same phospholipid bilayer, you know, has that phospholipid bilayer um, surrounding it just like the cell membrane does and it's just like all these organelles do. You know, we have that phospholipid bilayer at the nuclear membrane through that endoplasmic reticulum system. Uh, we actually have two of them in the mitochondria and around our uh, lysosomes and peroxisomes. 
So that vesicle will just transport it maybe from the rough endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi apparatus, number six. And the Golgi apparatus acts like a post office. So a lot of things that are going to be secreted outside the cell, they'll get their final stamp there at the post office. So the last processing of anything leaving the cell will um, go through the Golgi apparatus. Then it'll hop on another vesicle and get to the cell membrane. But the Golgi apparatus, a lot of times it'll put on like a little carbohydrate group that will be attached to the cell membrane of what's being secreted. That way our immune system cells know that not to attack that, that it's something that belongs in our body. It's not foreign. Last but not least, we have the roads and the cytoskeleton represents the roads and that's number seven, which having trouble finding on the animal cell, but just, ima just imagine a long fibrous protein, typically a microtubule is what it's called, kind of extending across the cell. The, the cell. And, you know, if you have a lysosome or a mitochondria that needs to get to the other side of the cell, it'll latch on to those, the, that cytoskeleton and just kind of like a roller coaster, just kind of ride it across the other side of the cell and do what it needs to do on that side of the cell. So hopefully that analogy helps you with all the organelles within the cell. Let's look how it all gets put together. This is a representation of milk secretion. So when a mother is lactating and producing milk for her baby, it all starts in the nucleus where uh, it gets activated to produce some of the proteins. You got to think about what uh, milk has in it. It has proteins, it has uh, lipids or fats, and it has carbohydrates. It's kind of a nice distribution of all these. And in the nucleus, the protein portion will be made as well as the enzymes for the lipid portion that needs to be made. From there, it'll leave the nucleus. Um, we're talking about the protein here. It'll go to the ribosomes that are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, so that rough ER, right beside the nucleus. And from there, it'll get it'll go inside the lumen or the inside portion of that rough ER and get processed and folded just right. It'll leave there through a vesicle. It'll move out to the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus will uh, put the final touches on it before it's secreted from the cell. So it'll add a little glycoprotein to the surface so that our body knows it's, it belongs in our, in our system. And then it'll butt off the side closest to the cell membrane and uh, find its way to the, the cell membrane where it'll be uh, released into the blood through exocytosis. So that's where the contents will be um, released from the cell membrane the phospholipid bilayer that was around the vesicle will become part of the cell membrane. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum will uh, help us with, with synthesizing the lipid portion and it'll join the proteins and uh, that's kind of how you go from the inside out on milk production. When you talk about cell biology, a lot of times you, it kind of pushes you towards cancer where um, things go awry. Here you have at the top is represented by a normal cell cycle and there's a delicate balance there where you have the gas and the brakes. The gas is the oncogenes and the brakes are the tumor suppressor genes and when these are in balance we don't have cancer but if these get off it can it can lead us to cancer. So what an oncogene is is a gene that has something to do with proliferation of the cells. So uh, going from, you know, our cells are, are dividing. A lot of our cells divide, some of them don't. But our cells that divide uh, and these proteins that play a role in that division are considered proto-oncogenes, which aren't a bad thing as long as they're proto-oncogenes. But if there's a mutation, maybe you've been out in the sun too long or exposed to radiation or smoking, it can cause a mutation in this gene and then the protein that this gene makes will cause our, the cell, a certain cell that's dividing to divide too much. 
and basically that's what cancer is is mitosis out of control down at the bottom the tumor suppressor gene does just that it suppresses a tumor and uh, so when you have a, a mutation in this gene from the same sources it can cause uh, you know damaged DNA to slip by and um, it can't keep the um, mitosis in check so most cancers it takes mutations on both an oncogene and a tumor suppressor gene to actually get full-fledged cancer with the tumor suppressor gene you really have to have two mutations because it's it's a recessive type of situation whereas the proto-oncogene is just one we're not going to get too deep into that but mutations happen as you age you get you have more and more mutations that accumulate and get you closer to something like this so cancer causing agents looking at a proto-oncogene can damage the dna whether it's you know pesticides or uh, radiation um, poor diet you know all, all these cancer causing agents can uh, cause dna damage which activates the oncogene and, and then you can develop a tumor cell cancer cell so learning cell biology helps us in medicine because you know cancer is a tough one it's better to prevent it it's better to eliminate all the cancer causing agents called carcinogens that i just mentioned and uh, prevent it all together because treatment's pretty nasty with the chemotherapy and radiation typically but fortunately uh, there's been a few breakthroughs in uh, cell biology where scientists have realized that you can actually target certain things. So uh, about 25% of all breast cancers have a mutation in a in an on oncogene, and it's it's represented by the HER2 nu there. HER stands for human epithelial growth factor receptor, so it represents that little receptor. And typically in our uh, the cells in our breast it will have limited numbers of these receptors and whenever growth factors bind to these receptors it causes proliferation and mitosis of that particular cell so as long as you don't have a lot of receptors here it's, it's a nice little balance but when there's a mutation in this gene it can overproduce these receptors and then more you know growth factor has more opportunities to bind to it and that's going to cause overgrowth in a tumor so uh, in the breast tissue therefore uh, there's been a monoclonal antibody called herceptin it basically intercepts uh, the growth factor to the re receptor so these monoclonal antibodies can bind to these receptors that have been over expressed on these cells and block the growth factor from binding and this targeted therapy doesn't have a lot of side effects you know chemotherapy and radiation have really nasty side effects but this monotherapy to target this has been a huge breakthrough and it really helps to treat uh, and, and improve the prognosis of patients who have their the, patients with breast cancer that have this particular mutation which is about 25 percent um, it's really helpful to have this targeted therapy and that's why cell biology is so important because it could lead to medical advances like this